This is the last video on the second coming of WB AIDS. I intend to examine the stylistics of the poem in this video. But before I do that, I would like to express my gratitude to all the viewers of our channel. Needless to say, you are the strength of our channel and I thank you, all of you, each and every one of you, from the bottom of my heart. I'm very happy with the way in which our channel is performing. And the only reason it's doing so well is that you are giving it unconditional support. I request you to continue giving this unconditional support. We have received numerous comments, all of them without exception being positive. I try to read all the comments. I try to respond to all the comments. I love positive comments, but I also love negative comments because they give me an opportunity to correct myself if correction is necessary. Nobody is infallible. Certainly not me. So please continue posting your comments and continue supporting our channel, watching the videos, sharing them, commenting on them. And those of you who have not yet become subscribers, please make it a point to subscribe to the channel at the earliest. Once again I thank every one of you from the bottom of my heart. Let us analyze and evaluate the stylistics of the second coming. At the very outset I have to warn you that The second coming has a tricky stylistics. It's a poem which refuses to allow itself to be pigeonholed. The poem consists of 22 lines. The poem is organized in two stanzas, but the stanzas are not of equal length. The meter is iambic pentameter, but the meter is not regularly maintained. There is a rhyme scheme. But the rhyme scheme is irregular. The imagery is mind-blowing. The images are mostly images of disorientation, destruction, disorder, devastation. The poem makes use of 
powerful but deliberately enigmatic symbolism. The important symbols in the poem are the falcon, the falconer, the gyre and the rough beast. The poem has a title which deliberately raises certain expectations and then dashes them to the ground. The diction is carefully chosen as is always the case in a Yeats poem. The rhythms are rough and powerful. I think that we should take an effort to explain why this poem has a stylistics which is difficult to analyze, evaluate and explain. The Second Coming was written in 1919 and published for the first time in the American periodical The Dial in 1920. So we are now in the centenary year of the publication of The Second Coming. How wonderful! I repeat, the second coming was written in 1990. By then, W.B. Yeats was very much in contact with T.S. Eliot and Ezra Pound. He was coming very much under the influence of the modernist wave. T.S. Eliot had published The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock in 1915. And there was much interaction between W.B. Yeats on the one hand and the leaders of the modernist revolution including T.S. Eliot and Ezra Pound on the other. Hence, quite understandably, There is a strong modernist presence in the second coming. As I said, the poem is divided into stanzas, but uneven stanzas. The poem makes use of iambic pentameter. but refuses to make use of the meter regularly. The poem has a rhyme scheme, but the rhyme scheme is chaotic. The poem is taken forward more by the strength of its imagery than by the strength of its logic. Above all, there is a profound mystery at the heart of the Second Coming. 
and that makes it very much a modernist poem. Without much exaggeration, it can be said that the second coming is to the corpus of W. B. Yeats what the wasteland is to the corpus of T. S. Eliot. There is no doubt that the second coming is closer to verse libre than to traditional words.